Well, you all might remember this thing. My pipe squisher. One thing I didn't do because I ran out of time when I was working on it was make this nut so that it would retract this top die, I guess you call it a die. And so it happened to be moved back by hand. So today, it's really windy and the job I got to do on site can't be done in the wind. So I'm gonna work on this. So I have this piece of scrap that I was going to bore out and thread and stick over this ram part. I think I'll do that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an inch and a quarter fine thread tap, so I'm going to have to single point it on the lathe, I think. Um, I thought about taking this bushing that I have, I guess it's technically a nut, and make it round and press it into there. I thought I might cheat, speed things up a little bit. Once I get that thread's done, I'm going to cut this, to where I just cut the ears off of it. So that it goes down across that hole. And the bolt will just be a half inch bolt that goes through there, and that's a lot bigger hole. And the reason for doing that with the ears and that small bolt is so it pushes on this plate. That way it'll always come back and hit this plate to push, not rely on that bolt. And that bolt will just simply bring this piece back with it. So that's where I'm headed with this right now. I set up the dial indicator. Use a dead center. The tailstock. I didn't tighten the tailstock down super tight. So just in case there is you know too much force pushing back on the tailstock, it'll slide. But it's snug enough to hold it there. And I've got it within a couple thousands all the way around. So I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't even need to be that accurate because I'm gonna be boring this hole out. So, you know, accuracy doesn't matter, but at least I'm close. I need a boring bar. It's slightly smaller than this one. I, my jump is too much from a good drill bit to a boring bar. Uh, the bit is actually sticking back or through the boring bar and it's hitting the back side of the cut now. So I'm just going to come over, try again, go as deep as I can, see when I eventually work my way all the way through. I got my feed rate in the slowest setting, which is uh, four thousandths of an inch per revolution. So I'm just barely creeping in. Looking good. Let me get a reading before I go too far here. Yep, it's a little over an inch, so that's where I thought I should be. Take off another. Ah, let's do fifty thousands. Be kidding me. Oh, I forgot to double it. Ha! Oh, uh, my bore is too big. Completely forgot to double the number. I cannot believe I did that. Well, mm. Mm -mm -mm. now I gotta make a decision. I think is what I'm gonna do to solve this. I can either machine this bushing down to where it fits in there. Well, I guess machine this nut to make a bushing be a better way to word that. Or. Or I can just start making an entirely new bushing to go in there. Ah, oh, man, I cannot believe I forgot to double that number. You know how long it's been since I've made that mistake? 
Oh, dang it. And I'm only 40 thousandths over what I want. The 40 thousandths is a lot when it comes to making threads. So what I think I'm going to do right now is make a pass and clean this up, get it machined to where it's perfectly square with that other face. Oh, that is not tight. I just saw that tip move. Yep, not tight at all. Ah, crap. Let her run. I feel like I nailed that finish. That is just amazing. So basically, if I machine this nut to a circle, it's going to be a little under two inches. So I'm going to shoot for 1.990 when I bore out this hole. slipped that one. I've been thinking that every measurement I take. Uh, 1.988. There we go. Alright. 1 1.988. 1.987. I'm going to say that's close enough. I'm going to leave it and then we'll start working on the bushing. Not that you can see. But I am running about, oh, looks like two thousandths. Eh, maybe a smidge over two thousandths out. It seems like that's the best I can do. I don't know if I even trust this face anyway. I'm going with it. I'm gonna start turning this back. I used a quarter inch lathe bits to space this off to give me enough depth here. The finish is actually not horrible. I don't think it's too hard on the lathe, I don't know. Try again. pretty hard all the way around. It's good. I am going to get out the, I think, parting blade. I don't know. I'm going to do something so I can make a little groove in here and get this hex flat up against this curve when I press it in. got excited and started parting clear through. It feels pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and take it over to the press. Looks pretty good. Oh yeah. That's good. For some reason, my 
quick coupling is leaking. It has never leaked in its life. And now it is. I don't know if I can spin it on here because I think I have to take off the corners in order for it to clear. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I'm kind of glad I didn't thread this entire block after all because even with just a short amount of threads, this uh, nut that I turned down has on it, it takes forever to screw that thing on there. I really didn't think about fine thread being, you know, so many turns. Put a bolt on one ear, put a washer on it, slide it through the extra large hole. Oops, washer. Ah, dang it. Ear and nut. And that's what I'm aiming for. I'm going to weld it and then I'm going to take the washers back out when I use it in operation. That way it can move side to side a little bit. That's not a bad little piece, is it? Now well, I have a couple scrap pieces of pipe. They're, this is the same size that normally squish. So let's fire it up and see if it still works. So I got a few questions last time as to why I squished this pipe instead of going to the work to saddle it, because saddling is so much stronger. Yes, saddling is stronger. I agree with you completely. But when you're putting up quite literally miles of corral, this is a lot faster because I got to cut it straight, I squish it, I stick it in place, and I go. Making saddles on each end of the pipe takes quite a while. I do use the chop saw to make the saddles, so that speeds it up a lot but it's still time consuming. Um, and also, by squishing it like this, if there's a mistake, it's really easy to fix. If it's too long, I can trim a little bit off. If it's too short, I can put a spacer in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's really easy to work with, it's fast. Um, if you do wanna see how to make saddle cuts with a chop saw or a bandsaw, I do have a video on that, so the yeah, iCard's up there somewhere. Um, otherwise, I'm going to consider the squisher to be pretty well done. I do want to make a mount 
So this squisher hangs vertically here in the trailer and also make a mount to where it goes on my truck. So I don't always have to have the trailer because sometimes um, I want just the squisher and nothing else out of this trailer. So uh, I would like to just put it up on the truck. So I'm gonna make some videos on that and who knows when that will be though. And also I am going to make a bulldozer attachment for this thing to where I can bend metal and make it bend that way around it, push it that way. And I'm also going to make like a bearing splitter adapter push plate down here and a push rod so I can push sprockets and pulleys off of shafts and bearings and stuff like that. So there's more to come on this, but in the meantime, this is awesome. So thanks for watching, y'all. Are you getting bored with this project yet, doggy? Dakota. Dakota. Hi, what are you doing? You're on camera.